In this video, I'll be covering a proposal from Jonathan Tuman to adopt a new difficulty adjustment algorithm this coming Bitcoin Cash upgrade in November 2020. But before we get to that, it may be a good idea to answer the question, what the heck is a difficulty adjustment algorithm? And why do we need a new one in the first place? To start, let's remember that Bitcoin groups transactions into blocks. These blocks are added to the block chain only when a miner finds a solution to what is effectively a guessing game puzzle for that block. Check out the video about how Bitcoin works on the Bitcoin.com channel for more details about why that's the case. In order to keep the average time between blocks the same and issue new coins into the supply at a predictable rate, we need a systematic way, aka an algorithm, to adjust the difficulty of that guessing game puzzle when there are more or less guesses being made on the network at once. Originally, the DAA was pretty simple. Every two weeks, or 2016 blocks, check the average time between those 2016 blocks. If it averages less than 10 minutes per block, increase the difficulty. If it averages more, decrease the difficulty. And while this algorithm worked fine for the most part, at least before Bitcoin split into BTC and BCH, it did have its own subtle consequences that you might not think of at first. For example, since hash rate on the Bitcoin network has done much more increasing than decreasing, and the difficulty is only adjusted every two weeks, the average block time for Bitcoin has actually consistently been below 10 minutes on average. And things got infinitely more complex when the Bitcoin blockchain split into BTC and BCH. While before, miners simply mined Bitcoin if it was profitable, after the split, miners had the additional option of mining on one chain or the other. Because of that, Bitcoin Cash almost certainly needed a new algorithm at the time of the split. Waiting 2016 blocks to adjust the difficulty could potentially result in the death of the chain. Those 2016 blocks, which normally would take two weeks to mine, could take two months or longer if there is a significant drop in hash rate. And if the chain becomes unprofitable enough or a bad enough investment in the eyes of miners, then the chain could simply halt as no one continues to mine it. A potential delay of 2016 blocks is simply much too slow a response for a multi-Bitcoin ecosystem. So a new algorithm was implemented, but unfortunately, it was far from perfect. This emergency difficulty algorithm, or EDA, worked like the original algorithm, but also detected extreme cases of low hash rate in recent blocks, and then lowered the difficulty significantly for the next block in those cases. This algorithm led to wild swings in difficulty and hash rate. Miners would take advantage of the low difficulty when the EDA kicked in, mining many blocks in a short period of time, and then they would simply leave the chain to mine BTC when the difficulty went back up and profitability went back down. Until, of course, the EDA kicked in again, which required a long period of slow blocks that were only produced at all because at least some miners mined BCH at a loss during that period of higher difficulty. These oscillations between high and low hash rate led to much longer average confirmation times, since a transaction is much more likely to be sent during one of the long periods of slow blocks than in the short bursts of blocks that happen in between. They also caused significantly more blocks to be mined than one every 10 minutes on average, which is the reason Bitcoin Cash is currently about a month ahead of BTC in terms of blocks and total number of coins. It's worth noting though that this issue really isn't the fault of miners. They don't even have to plan ahead to abuse the problem. It happens naturally given the existence of miners who switch with their mining in the current moment simply depending on which chain is currently more profitable. It's up to us to build a system where profit-seeking behavior benefits the system as a whole, or at least doesn't disrupt it. The EDA was quickly replaced with another new algorithm, this one built from scratch instead of modifying the old DAA, and it did perform much better, but it was and is still prone to oscillations that is swings between higher and lower hash rate. This new difficulty adjustment algorithm, which has been Bitcoin Cash's algorithm for two and a half years now, 
recalculates the difficulty every single block based on the average amount of time between those previous 144 blocks, which is about one day's worth of blocks. Mr. Tumim does a great job explaining where these oscillations come from in his in-depth video, but here's a condensed version. Because the current algorithm averages the block times of the last 144 blocks, blocks leaving that 144 block window when a new block is found have just as much effect on the difficulty as the block entering the window. Whenever a quickly mined block leaves the window, for example, it causes a decrease in difficulty because the average time between blocks goes up. That lower difficulty brings about another faster block in the present. Generally, whatever events took place 144 blocks ago are likely to be echoed into the present. And of course, that echo will eventually leave the 144 block window itself, creating its own echo. It's really neat how you can see as he scrolls that whatever is happening at the lower left where blocks are leaving the window is what you can expect to then happen with the new blocks in the upper right. In addition to degrading the user experience with long confirmation times, these oscillations make it more profitable for a miner to not mine BCH during the points of high difficulty. This is a strategy that, if used by enough miners, could cause the death of the BCH chain as blocks stop coming in at all. We are very lucky to have miners who are invested in BCH enough in the long term to mine it at a loss to keep it functioning in the short term, and even point extra hash power to the chain at great cost to themselves when a block hasn't been found in an especially long time. But we should certainly not depend on the charity of miners to keep BCH working. When it comes to alternatives, there are several options. For example, real-time targeting algorithms, or RTTs, take into account how long it's been since the last block to determine the difficulty of the current one. While a neat idea, it's a relatively large change to how Bitcoin works and requires miners' clocks to be well synchronized, which opens up the chain to a wide variety of potential problems and exploits. Instead, let's consider that the problem with the current algorithm is that data points leave the set abruptly. It's abrupt because the algorithm is a simple moving average algorithm, or SMA where each block in the window is given equal weight. To address the problem at its root, we can instead reduce the effect any given block has on the current difficulty as it gets older. If we do this linearly with a constant decrease in influence, we get algorithms like LWMA, which stands for Linearly Weighted Moving Average, and the WT, or Weighted Time family of algorithms. Another option is to reduce the influence of a block exponentially as it gets older, which is what the EMA, or Exponential Moving Average family of algorithms do. Algorithms in this class include Jacob Eliasoff's EMA1D and Simpex PT1D, WTAMA from Tom Harding, and ASSERT from Mark Lunderberg. EMAs have some unique benefits when it comes to calculating the current difficulty. So with all these options, what can we possibly do to figure out which one is best? Well, it turns out actually a lot. Open source software, forked by Mr. Tumim from Kyupachan's difficulty adjustment simulations, makes it much easier to compare the behavior of different algorithms with its graphical user interface, as well as its interface full of the user's graphs. And while I'm not an expert on the details, it does seem like this simulation was made with a lot of important things in mind, like the option to set what percentage of miners mine BCH steadily, or no matter what, what percentage are variable miners, which will switch partial hash rate back and forth depending on profitability, and what percentage are greedy, and will switch 100% of their hash rate depending on which chain is currently more profitable, given a threshold of, say, 3% greater profitability. While models cannot, of course, be perfect, they can still help us make as educated a decision as possible. The potential for oscillation problems with the current algorithm was, in fact, predicted before it was implemented back in 2017 using these tools. The current DAA's oscillations have even been getting worse over time as more miners switch to more profitable strategies that involve switching chains depending on their relative profitability. The results of these simulations, along with the urgent nature of the current DAA's problems, make it clear to me at least that we should absolutely change the DAA this coming upgrade. There are several drastically superior options, 
and it's really just about deciding which of them to implement. Take a look at this table showing simulation results for five algorithms at three different block window sizes. While all of the algorithms result in average block times of very close to 600 seconds, you'll notice that several of them actually have much longer average confirmation times. These are the SMA, or Simple Moving Average Algorithms. All of the other algorithms perform well, though ASSERT does consistently have the edge. The chart also shows how much more profitable it is to have one mining strategy over the others. Once again, the SMA algorithms are vastly outperformed by the other options, which keep the three types of mining much closer in profitability. Since the non-SMA options do perform so similarly, it's arguably more important to make the choice between them based on considerations other than their simulated performance as a DAA, and instead based on things like how much work they would be to implement, and how costly they are to run in terms of processing power. Mr. Tumum counts out LWMA and WT because they require sampling every block header in their windows, for example, 288 blocks, in order to calculate the next block's difficulty. That left WTAMA and ASSERT, which each only requires sampling two block headers. If you'd like the details on how these two algorithms work, definitely check out Tumim's original article on read.cache. But here are the two points that he thinks are most important when picking between the two. First, integer approximations are harder with assert, and apparently you shouldn't use floating point math because different processors can differ slightly in how they handle it. Second, WTAMA has issues with singularities, where the algorithm fails completely given certain inputs, and negative timestamps, which is when a block has an earlier timestamp than the one that came before it on the blockchain. Both algorithms need to get more complex to work around their respective issues, but he argues that assert is the less problematic because it doesn't require messing with any other consensus rules, while WTAMA would require forbidding large negative solve times. Mr. Tumim then covers picking an integer approximation method, deciding the half-life for the exponential function, picking a block height-based activation over a median time past activation, testnet details, potential attacks, how to mitigate those attacks, all with his own links to more information, which you should definitely check out if you're interested, but for the sake of brevity, I won't get into that here. In his conclusion, Mr. Tumim lists 12 desirable properties of a DAA, and I'll just read them verbatim. 1. It should be stable and not prone to oscillations. 2. It should keep confirmation times low. 3. It should keep incentives for miners to perform hash rate shenanigans low. 4. It should keep incentives for miners to perform timestamp manipulation shenanigans low. 5. It should keep incentives for miners to perform selfish mining shenanigans low. Six, because of three, four, and five, honest mining strategies with steady hash rate should get near optimal income. Seven, the chain should recover quickly after sudden changes in hash rate and or exchange rate. Eight, the average block interval should be kept close to the target, 600 seconds. Nine, the algorithm should be mathematically simple and elegant. Ten. The algorithm should be easily understood and analyzed. 11. The algorithm should be easy to implement elegantly and simply. And 12. The algorithm should have few or no edge and corner cases. It will be up to the rest of the development community to decide whether they accept these priorities and whether or not they agree that assert fits them best. Before finishing up, I just want to give Jonathan Toome serious props for taking the initiative to create a proposal and put it out there. I also think it's very reasonable that, as he's mentioned elsewhere, he would be happy with many of the other options as well, suggesting that instead of trying to find the best algorithm, maybe we should just try to find the one that is acceptable to the largest number of relevant parties. I hope that the discussion about Bitcoin Cash's DAA can remain reasonable and evidence-based. And then once a decision needs to be made, I hope that that decision-making process can remain reasonable where everyone is willing to compromise at least a little bit.